rain is doing its best to dampen my spirits, but do you know what? Not today. Not today, Satan. Not today. Nothing can bring me down today. And do you know why? It's because I'm driving what I consider to be the most important EV, which has been released in the last few years. This is the MG4, and it claims to be an affordable electric hatchback with no compromise. This is the car that we've all been crying out for. This is gonna help bring more EVs into the mainstream. That's some bold claims, isn't it? Is it too good to be true? Well, that's what I'm gonna find out today. Hello Electroheads, I'm Tish and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're gonna be taking a closer look at the MG4, telling you everything you need to know about this new electric car. If that sounds good, then please stay tuned. And if you do like electric car reviews and also everything electric from bikes to mobility, then make sure you hit the subscribe button to see more videos from me and all the team at Electroheads. There are currently two versions of the MG4 to choose from, both with one electric motor driving the rear wheels. The entry-level standard range version is only available in the SE trim line and gets a 51 kilowatt hour battery, an official range of 218 miles, and is said to cover 0 to 62 in 7.7 seconds. The MG4 long range gets a bigger 64 kilowatt hour battery, offering a much more impressive 281 miles from a full charge, as well as a more powerful 201 brake horsepower electric motor. This model is available in both the SE trim that I have here and a top specification trophy. This version of the car is heavier overall due to its bulkier battery, so it's actually a little slower on paper than the standard range model. The long range covers 0 to 62 miles per hour in 7.9 seconds. So let's start by talking styling, because it's not something that MG has always been well known for. The MG ZS EV when it was first released was okay. It was a little bit soft around the edges, it wasn't particularly interesting. And then it got a facelift, which bought some new alloy wheel options, and just a slightly more futuristic feel about it. And then there was the MG5 Estate. That was a pretty good all-round car, but those wheels, my God, they were awful. This right here, the MG4, shows a brand new design language for MG. And it's a pretty exciting design language, isn't it? This looks smart. This doesn't look like a boring EV. It's really sharp. There's some really nice details. I love this scoop on the bonnet. You've also got the sharp headlights and you've also got the contrasting black diffuser, which is really quite low and aggressive. It makes this car look quite sporty. And so it should, because this has some sporty makeup. You've got the contrasting black gloss details around the air vents with the matching gloss black door mirrors. And if you do go for the top specification car, you also get a gloss black roof as well. There's no hubcaps to be found here. All versions of the MG4 get alloy wheels as standard and they're in this nice two-tone design. You've also got MG's new design language in the LED front headlamps. And as standard, you get LEDs on the front and the rear of the car. I also quite like this plastic trim that runs along the bottom of the car. It's quite practical, it stops you from getting dings in the car parks, but it also just adds to the style. The MG4 is quite a long vehicle. It's comparable to the ID3, slightly bigger than the Peugeot E208 and also the Vauxhall Corsa, which gives you a bit more interior and boot space, which I'll talk about in a minute. But around the back, you can tell from its styling that it starts to feel a bit more crossover. Around the front, it's very much aggressive hatchback, but around the back, you can tell that it has an extended amount of space. They've added again those sharp design elements with the light bar, which runs along the back. You've got this really nice scooped spoiler, and you've got again, the sharp LED tail lights. If you do go for the top spec trophy version of the MG4, you also get a very smart little double spoiler. But other than that, this entry-level car still looks really smart. As I mentioned, the MG's dimensions are most comparable with the ID3, despite the fact that it's just a little bit lower. However, MG have chosen to prioritize interior space. In the Volkswagen, you get around 385 liters. 
Inside here, you'll find 366. Still a respectable amount, around the same as the Renault Zoe and quite a lot bigger than the Corsa or the Peugeot. You also don't get an adjustable boot floor, which is a shame, but you do get a handy carry case as if you already weren't smug enough that you own an MG. Play! MG have chosen to take that extra wheelbase and give them more rear interior space, making them more competitive in this department than the Corsa and also the Peugeot E208. There's plenty of leg room and I've got an okay amount of headroom. And unlike these cars, because this is dedicated EV, doesn't have a transmission tunnel, or at least it has a very, very small one. And that means there's loads of legroom for the middle passenger as well, making it practical for three people back here. Yes, okay, they need to be quite small people, but it is possible and far more possible than in some of its rivals. One of my favorite things, and it's a bit of an odd one, is back here there's a USB port. Nothing strange about that, but it's the fact that it's a USB and not USB-C. See, I understand that the future is USB-C, but there's nothing more frustrating than getting in a car and not having a USB-C cable and not having anywhere to plug it in. Where's the lamb sauce? This the lamb Where's sauce? the lamb That's sauce? The lamb sauce. Just as we've seen with the Kia EV6 and Ionic 5, the MG4 offers a vehicle to load system for using the car's battery to power external devices. This is available on all trim levels and the adapter will cost around £150. So, so far, so good. But what about inside? The interior of the new MG3. Yeah, it's all right. It's not bad. It's actually better than expected. I expected some cheaper materials to be used like gloss black and there is some appearing in different areas but actually there's some nice soft touch materials as well. I've got a nice leather wrapped armrest, leather steering wheel, I've got some nice blue stitching as well on the armrest. Tons of storage, I mean you've got this open storage area here, you could easily pop a handbag down the middle here. You've got a little hideaway section if you wanted to tidy some things up. You've also got this little netted part here that you could pop your mobile phone in. You've also got two USB-C charge ports underneath this centre console. And what that means is you can actually run your cables up and through that little area there. So if you wanted to tidy things away, you could. I mean, I'm not really showing that off very well, am I? It looks a little bit messy, but you get the whole idea. I also like that inside the cup holders, you've got the little bouncy parts that stick outwards and hold your cup into place. Yeah, it all feels more than adequate. I wanted to say adequate, but it's not. It's more than adequate. It feels a lot better than other cars in this class. As we know, the ID3 has absolutely been ridiculed by its interior quality. And I think that the MG4 is up to par with that car. The only thing that does let it down slightly is these cloth seats. They look nice enough. You've got little bits of leatherette inserts. The blue stitching helps, but I don't think they feel particularly hard wearing. They're a little bit soft in places. I can imagine the bolstering might wear over time. But if you do go for the higher specification models, then you do actually get part leather seats instead, which would mean that would no longer be an issue. Something which previously MG was quite heavily criticised for was their infotainment system. Now it has improved on this new car, but it's still not perfect. I would give you a review of the satellite navigation because that's usually very slow to load up, but actually on the entry level SE, you don't get satellite navigation as standard, but you do get Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, which is always the quicker function to use anyway. The rest of your systems can be found by pressing home, and then you get this little roundup where you can get a few of the things that you use often on your main screen, including, unfortunately, yep, it's the climate control dials. MG, you couldn't get everything right, could you? They had to do one thing which was negative, and that is to not have physical climate control dials, which is a real shame. And also on the rest of these systems, if you swipe across, that's where you'll find some of the other functions, including all of the car settings. Now these, <sighs> no. <sighs> 
yeah, they don't respond that well to inputs. <laughs> if you haven't noticed, which can be a little bit frustrating. Now, MG have said that these cars are still going through some of their updates. So these are things which hopefully will be bugged out as the time goes on. I'm also wondering if the functions of the multifunctional steering wheel might change over time because very Tesla-esque, they've not actually labeled them. So perhaps for the time being, you swipe this up, to turn your volume up, which, okay, apparently now I've got climate control working through, what on earth? So this did seemingly start as my volume and is now my climate, why is that? But it seems like these can be customized, perhaps? One minute later. You can set the left and the right switch oh. to do either AC. Arguably, when talking EVs, there is one very important driving function, and that is your regenerative braking. It's fitted to the MG, and it comes in four different strengths that you can choose from. Everything from low to strong, with medium and also adaptive in between. Essentially, what adaptive will do is using your maps, the car will plan your route ahead, and then it will change your regenerative braking accordingly. My favorite option is the strong option, as this means I have to do as little effort as possible. But unfortunately, if you are looking for a one pedal drive, the MG4 can't quite do that, but it does help take some of the effort out and also put some energy back into the battery. The one disappointing thing is how you get to those regen options. There's no paddles behind the steering wheel. You do have to enter the touchscreen, which still though improved, can be a little bit slow at reacting when it comes to prods. But to get there, you simply have to press the home button, swipe across to the vehicle settings, hope that the touchscreen takes an input of one of your prods, and there you'll find your regenerative braking modes. The MG4 returned around four miles per kilowatt during my time with it, despite some sprightly driving. This means based on a usable battery capacity of 61.7 kilowatt hours, it would have returned little under 250 miles from a full charge. That's within 5% of MG's claim. The standard range MG4 has a maximum charging speed of 117 kilowatts, while the long range models top out at 135 kilowatts, which is on par with the speed you'll get from the ID3. That means if you plug the MG4 into an 150 kilowatt rapid charger, it will take around 39 minutes to top up the standard range models from 10 to 80% capacity. Fully charging the smaller battery at home will take around eight hours from a 7.4 kilowatt wall box, or 10 hours if you go for the larger battery. The most exciting thing about all of this is the future of MG4 doesn't stop here. They already have plans for two more models. That includes an even longer range car with 369 miles, crazy, and also a performance variant. Now, I don't know if you guys remember, but if you've watched my Cooper Born eBoost review, one of the things that I said was I just felt like they could have done more, and MG have proved this. Their performance variant is going to have 330 kilowatts of power and it's going to do 0 to 62 in 3.9 seconds now that is worth getting excited about i'm so excited okay someone needs to find out who's been leaking volkswagen secrets to mg it wasn't me because i'm trying to find something i don't like about this car but MG are leaving me coming up empty. This is a really great car and it drives good as well. Yes, there's small complaints in the fact that it does feel a little bit brittle, especially on these Oxford back roads. But overall, it's engaging. The brakes are pretty good. The steering is well weighted. And also it's rear wheel drive like the ID3. So unlike cars from the Stellantis group, you're pushing from the back, which makes it a little bit more engaging. You feel like you can play around with it a little bit more. This car is just ticking all of the boxes, and I promise I'm trying to find things I don't like, but it's really hard. But do you know what? The good news doesn't even stop there. The MG4 also gets MG's 60,000 
seven year warranty. Plus they've just released the residual values and it's said that the MG4 is going to keep over 60% of its value after three years. That's better than all its rivals. So as if its entry level price wasn't already good enough, that then means that PCP figures, the main way we pay for our cars, are then reduced. With £4,000, you can get the entry level SE car with the smaller battery for just £300 a month. That really is what we needed from the industry. And though this is a brilliant car, which I hope lots of people will buy, it also sends a very important message to the rest of the industry that it can be done, that affordable EVs can be built with no compromise. This gives me big hope for the future. But let me know, what do you think of the MG4? Are you disappointed or do you think it's lived up to expectations? Let me know in the comments down below. If you've enjoyed the video as ever, hit that like button. And also, if you wanna see more videos from me, then hit the subscribe button. Until next time, guys, see you later.